Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, I have a video on how to learn vocab, and there are so many on YouTube and around the internet, etc., etc. But quite often, it's very hard to find a video on the mistakes that students make when learning vocab, because students always feel it's never enough what they learn for an exam, or they never feel fully prepared. And of course, we as teachers try to give as much as we can. We try to give advice on how to learn vocab, how to practice it, recycle it, etc., etc. But of course, if you are trying to get an A in an FCE, a CA or CPE, or maybe a band eight and above in IELTS, a lot of that learning comes down to you as the student. You need to uh, sort of face that vocabulary on a sort of daily basis. And that's what many students don't do. Or if they do, they do it wrong. So I want to kind of explain to you what we should avoid. Let's have a look at the first one. Less is more. That's one of my favorite expressions in the whole sort of teaching sphere. Uh, I sometimes find that students go a bit crazy sometimes learning vocab. They write down sort of 50 bits of vocab um, and they're not going to remember most of those. It's too much, especially if it's, like, if it's like a big chunk of language, like a whole sentence or a phrase or an idiom. You're not going to learn 50 idioms a day, like even I can't. Um, so again, less is more, meaning that it is better maybe to have 20 a day and actually learn those and use them properly. And then the next day do 20 rather than 50, or most of those which you won't remember. That's a very sort of important point. Let's go down to the next one. Uh, vocab recorded but not recycled. Now, this is a very important point too. Now, most students do write down vocab in my lessons and at home they write down some vocab. But usually what happens, they write it down on a piece of paper or in their vocabulary book and they never look at it again. And that's the problem. You know, I think I read somewhere that you should learn or recycle a piece of vocab seven times before it stays in your brain. It's like, um, I'll show you here as well, the same principle. I have another video on my YouTube channel called uh, The Problem with Learning Murphy's. Now I like this book very much and most of you probably know this book. But it's the same principle here. You could like do, um, say, this unit here, names uh, with and without the, for example, and do the exercises. Uh, you turn over to do the next unit, and you're probably not going to look at the previous one again or for a very long time. So you're just not recycling it enough. So that's a sort of very important point. So by writing down, say, fewer words or fewer collocations, um, at least if you uh, do recall them, you should recycle them. Now, a good way to recycle is to make your own sentences, to make your own examples, play with the grammar you know, add some other bits of English. Even for example, if you are just doing like a vocab exercise, let's just say uh, from this book, I was, I'll explain this one in a minute. Uh, this is a very good book, by the way. But even here, when you do say one of the vocabulary exercises here, and this one's about energy from fossil fuels, and this is advanced vocabulary, by the way. Uh, again, you know, once you've kind of done this exercise, uh, here, well, make your own examples, play with the vocabulary and structures that you have, and just be imaginative with it, and that way it will stay in your head a lot longer, and something's just fallen out of my book. So, we go into the next point, heavily reliant on reference books. So, I'll pick it up again. So, again, this is a vocabulary reference book. Now, of course, there are quite a few that you can buy. Uh, I do like these series. They used to be pretty bad, but the new updated versions are pretty good, in my opinion. Um, but again, you know, there's lots of good vocab here, but I kind of find that it's the minimum, especially if you're doing CAE. For CPE, it's not enough at all. Even to get, say, a level eight and above in IELTS, you need something more than this. So a lot of students who learn English themselves will stick to such books, and it's a bit of a problem because, again, you know, good stuff, but it's just not enough. And again, a lot of the examples are quite specific and you need to sort of play with sort of other sources. So you've got to move away just from these reference books. So this should be a part of your learning, but not the main part, if you understand. Because that comes on to the next point, lack of authentic sources, B2 and above. Now you'll find guys, when you go to like a lot of YouTube videos or you go online to look at vocabulary lists, there is often not much dedicated to learning, which is B2 and above. It's easy to write vocab lists for elementary, and quite often if you do find vocabulary lists at higher level, it's just a list without any explanation, uh, and that's a problem. Uh, I even saw this on uh, one of the Russian uh, uh, social networks, VK, with phrasal verbs without examples. It's useless and it means nothing. Um, but with authentic sources, what I mean by this is that like, again, when you're sort of upper intermediate uh, and above, 
You can go online, read the BBC, read the Guardian. It's not easy, but it has to be done. And you've got to practice getting faster and understanding more. Read literature, um, read some, uh, say, National Geographic or Discovery, watch Discovery Channel or something like that to get that topical vocabulary that you wouldn't find quite often in a textbook for your class or even sometimes in a reference book because it's not enough. I want to give you sort of an example. Uh, now, I teach uh, CPE at the moment. And uh, one of my students recently wrote this essay. I want to read you some of it. Now, I kind of explained to them the necessity of using authentic sources. So they had to write a restaurant review for CPE from the book Expert Proficiency. I think it's unit five, if I'm not mistaken. And I said to them, okay, before you write this essay, I want you to go uh, onto Google, type into Google like positive and negative restaurant reviews, and just have a look at some of the structures that they have and you know some of the sentences. So don't just record single words because that's not useful. You want to record whole structures, sometimes a whole sentence that you can transplant into your speaking or into your essay because you're going to recycle it. And the student wrote this, and I want to read you sort of two paragraphs uh, just to show you the difference that using authentic sources can make. Of course, it's CP, it's high level, but here we go. The tell-telling name of this legendary borderline posh restaurant might utterly mislead you. I like wine 2.0, it's far beyond a shabby drinking pit. It being the epitome of elegant dining experience, the place where the wonderkind chef offers a uniquely sartorial menu infused with mouth-watering starters and fabulously gobsmacking main courses with fish prevailing on the cart. The choice of wine can hardly uh, be beaten, probably only by a three-floor extravaganza of Hyde in London. However teetotal you might be, you will definitely fail to resist the temptation of a staggering choice of drinks. Being exposed to the lucrative abundance of potent full body or light-hearted fruity sparkling wines, you will take your demise meekly and embrace an all-night frolic wholeheartedly. I mean, bloody hell, I mean, God, I mean, it's better than what native speakers can produce. And she hasn't copied that from a source. She basically just took parts of authentic sources and manipulated it into her essay. And as a result, it's perfect. It's just amazing. Because guys, you've got to get your vocabulary from somewhere. And if you really want to achieve that high level like C1, C2, you've got to go to authentic sources. So read them regularly and record the vocab that you think is quite useful. Now coming to another point, um, uh, a big problem with students, recording vocab is often disorganized. So even in my classes, I moan at students when they write down vocab like around the corner of the page of the textbook and I said, you're not gonna remember that and you're not gonna look at it again. It's really disorganized. So you've got to have a nice vocabulary book which is clean and tidy with examples and references. But again, by recording like say fewer pieces of language, I don't want to say words like pieces of language, like a whole sentence or a collocation, three or four words, an idiom expression. Um, by doing like a bit, a bit less, you're more likely to kind of say, check it again and again. And also if it's tidy, you're gonna look at it again. Remember your university days maybe, like if you were just scribbling notes down in a very untidy way, you, you really wouldn't probably look a second time unless it was something that was clean and organized, then you would. So it's kind of psychological. The last point here is choice of unnecessary items. Now this is a difficult thing because sometimes if you're gonna read a book or let's especially, um, sources like you know National Geographic or Time Magazine or whatever, because in the FCE, CA and CP, they ask on those themes. They never ask on Harry Potter. As much as we like Harry Potter, they don't ask about these. So you really want to make sure that you read these kind of sources. But when you do record vocabulary, you might see the word like post-mortem. You're probably not gonna use post-mortem in your spoken English very often, but you again, it's a good sort of passive word. But if you see the collocation, bitterly disappointed, well, you know the word disappointed, but you record this collocation because you see it for the first time, meaning very disappointed. And it's a very natural thing, you know, uh, you can use that in your speaking. Like if we had a CAE part one question, you know, um, you know uh, what's important for you and a friend? Well, the most important thing for me is not to feel bitterly disappointed if someone were to let me down so a friend should be reliable. As an examiner, I would listen to those collocations and think that's really, really good. And you get them from real sources. You're not gonna get many of them from reference books. It's real sources. And again, you, can't, you want to record things which you think maybe, okay, I know this, but I like the structure. I like the combination of those words. I can use that. If you see something very specific um, with a cultural reference, you're not gonna really maybe need that so much if you don't use it in your own language, but it's good for passive knowledge anyway. So again, guys, those are my six points I really wanted to highlight. 
that are important when, you know, the mistakes people make when learning vocabulary. So when you follow my advice and you change it, then, well, you know, your English is gonna be perfect very, very soon. So guys, I hope that video was useful. Thumbs up as usual, and I will see you again for another video. Goodbye.